Hello SGD Sacred Geometry Decoder. This video will be a, a double experiment. We'll be looking at abrasive sand. So the abrasive, so modern machine still relies on it now and this was, um, well just nature insists on it. And so how to work stone. So Natural History Book 36, Pliny the Elder. And what's very, Book 36, especially the chapters around there in regards to uh, the philosophy of of stonework and what they thought about large projects at the time but the essence of it that i want to show uh chapter nine talking about the trade in sand and that particular sands for, for instance the, the romans were getting indian sand so we're going all the way to india to get uh corundum or aluminium oxide uh corundum the root for that is the Sanskrit word for ruby because rubies are made of aluminium oxide just like corundum and using that as a polish. But cutting, also polishing. So it's not just about the stones, it's also about those highly polished gems and, and precious stones that will vary in the past. Highly polished mirror finish polish on, on stone gems is just the standard. Uh, for some reason, it's got particular uh, attraction in one particular cave and at the exclusion of every other piece of polished granite must focus on that but uh, he talks about indian sand and it is held in highest but the uh, whereas the sand from india does not leave so smooth a face so it's not polishing as well but what he describes is that the indian sand must be calcined or burned to get it to that higher level so when they're in mines now when they're making um burning limestone to make concrete cement um burning stones in copper refiner to break up help break up the stone and begin the refining process calcining is still a thing very important and so the experiment is i essentially have emery uh, it's uh, really it's aluminium oxide or corundum which i've mixed with granite dust from the grinding and so forth so but it's not pure it's now emery grade and the thing is just to do a very quick easy cheap experiment let's just burn it and see what happens i'm going to try and take a really rough coarse grit something you'll find on real rough sandpaper you can like feel the grit easily through your fingers and turn that into a polishing paste which is really fine uh, whether you're using diamond um, car, uh, silicon carbide emery quartz what it does for polishing is very 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 tiny grits it's like the difference between a rough sandpaper which and a really smooth sandpaper that's where the polishing comes from so experiment will be let's make some calcine sand and then look at how quickly using that calcine sand can i get a reflective um surface before i invest time making a, a mirror polish so i want to make the, the sand just like grind these original stones were rough i ground them down to 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 flat and smooth and now we're going to be creating the actual dust the the abrasive that's just so uh, it's essential in this type of process and that's calcining so here i have uh corundum aluminium oxide because i've mixed some granite dust with it so let's just call it an emery but essentially it's aluminium oxide it's an but it's also an emery so we're going to calcine or or burn the sand if you just do a google search calcine sands how it's still an issue now in regards to mining tailings for instance because of a concentration of uh, things such as arsenic in there and that'll actually be a little bit of a uh, side benefit i think uh, we'll show that at the end so Firstly, that sand actually transferred, so the water will start to boil very quickly. So I did the same, because it was already in water, I'll boil that off. And then, you know, it's just a matter of uh, drying the sand up, heating it up to the top te temperature you can get. I'm not building a furnace, I've just got a little barbecue going, so the temperatures would be uh, preferably higher in the other one. So this is just um, an experiment, but you can, again, you can see the... Uh, the steam will rise off the mud will turn back into that light gray paste so we're burning 
the crystals and the, the purpose of that is just like with fire setting with fire you can break crack stone very easy once you've heated it up it becomes what's called friable which means it's easy to fracture so the small pieces will break up into even smaller pieces and that's the point of this so I want how do you create a polishing paste from start I could just I've gone onto net got some polishing paste polished up uh, granite diamond whatever you want to high power but how do, uh, to a high sheen finish but this this how would we do that from the beginning so I set the fire on top as well just because I can just pull those little bits of wood at and and uh, sieve it out and get the uh, original dust back in there but part of the process was to heat it up then to uh, like fire setting once again to put the pour the water on it that should cause the, the the crystals to break and fracture that little bit more so instead of pounding hammering it hammering it to break those crystals down this will just be an accelerated way of doing it and so again just like uh, fire setting experiments it's ancient technique it had if you want to break big giant bits of granite basalt diorite whatever uh, just set a fire to it and throw some water on it that baby's going to crack like nothing so same principle but calcining um, calcining is calcination still a chemistry operation but you also see it referenced in the older texts such as in the alchemist there so once again put the water in there uh, heat it up it's just going to boil off uh, very quickly and it'll be back to the original d d dust sandy condition again the purpose is to break up imagine really rough sandpaper and but now I want to make a really fine sandpaper and so that's the process going on here I've that was this was the first experiment I'd make a better fire and I'd I'd, be, I'd heat it up hotter and re return it a few times but just with you know a few uh, planks and sticks that I just had laying around I thought okay let's have a go so again heating it up heating it up from the bottom heating it from the top you could do this in a uh, ceramic um, jar, copper jar, the, the temperature is never going to get hot enough to melt any metal container and uh, again you could use um, ceramics in that point so final step and then I just boil and heat it out but what was uh, I'd already read about calcine sands modern problem now mining tailings concentrated arsenic and uh, the purple sands well, that was in what's in the bottom of a pan. I believe, I believe that that is uh, arsenic in there, which would enable me to now extract that arsenic and add it to copper. Ancient Egyptian copper was not pure copper. It had arsenic impurities to begin with. But the artifacts, tools that have been studied from Old Kingdom uh, period show that the, the levels of arsenic are too high to be natural occurring, that they were adding the arsenic on purpose which transforms a, a copper chisel into an iron chisel. Arsenical bronze, arsenic with 2% more weight, is as good as um, iron tool. So that would be the, uh, a second benefit. But how does it work in regards to polish? And an experiment, Morian polish. Uh, so this was one of the plates I was using to grind down. Um, now, you can see the differentiation. So rather rough, this is really smooth. Uh, let's give you an idea of a smooth, you know, like a, it, you know, captures the, uh, the sweat in there. Now, this part is flat. It is so smooth, the camera's not going to give an idea, but like surface roughness, this is as good as, you know, what, what you'll see anywhere else. Um, really in terms of, of surface roughness there and but you know, that's not reflective obviously even this part which is you know some would say polished uh, I wouldn't classify it as polished I would say this is just very well honed but it's not quite reflective yet and now another way you can test these things is to light on um, take a piece of chalk now for instance if I rub the chalk on this part now here it even still has the hints of the uh, saw marks in, in the granite doesn't show up when you look at it 
but this is what one of the advantages of using this chalk method it shows what the eye won't see but if I was to okay you can even hear the difference see the, the chalk's not catching here it is this is flat this is smooth as you would call it polished but it's not mirror polish or reflective just yet so if you want to take it for optical testing far above what would be detectable with uh, surface roughness meters and so again this like this is so smooth it's not even it's not cutting it's not even catching the chalk that's really smooth there now let's uh okay now so this smooth part here not a mirror polish but uh, one way that they you know give the appearance of polish is to give it the wet look in or to use a sealer now at that point it starts to become reflective and uh, should be able to if I get it from the right angle with the camera you'll also get like the mirror finish starting to come in but that's still cheating that's using a sealer in there but so uh, now let's experiment with some calcined sand uh, emery burnt emery as described earlier and among the work a very small area like I, I could work a much larger area but I'm just going to be using this small block I'm just working that particular area now grip um, so because I just want to work a smaller area in there so you can see the different phases of the uh, polishing process I should need to make sure that the I've got some uh, grit in here so I actually have to clean this block a little bit because I don't want the the coarser grains to interfere and create scratches because creating a mirror, mirror polish is not about the as long as the material is of equal hardness or harder abrasive value it'll it'll create a mirror polish you don't need diamond you don't need emery like cuts like it's all about grain size so for instance this is uh, 80 grit sandpaper really rough stuff but if I was exactly the same material but if I was to get 2000 grit sandpaper I would create a mirror polish so can I okay I'll use another side of this stone and then this this block I just want to remove any feel it with my hands make sure there's no uh, I can, yeah, you've got to get all of the coarse grains. You, you know, you feel. I can feel them running my hand over there, so I want to get that nice and clean. And I want to make sure that there is no uh, loose, sort of large bits of grit on on this block. So I'll use this side of it. Get rid of the grit, clean it up, and. I'm going to put my calcined sand that I've already mixed with water and taking the smaller, using the smaller grits and okay. I'll push most of that to the side for now and just a matter of rubbing so let's see how long it takes I'm just going to restart the camera quick while I'm here, how did I make this so uh, I didn't have modern tech to make very fine grit and that's all it takes to polish whether it's if you're doing granite crush some granite make a fine grit you have perfect polishing material it's just it's not the not the like cuts like that's there's no there's nothing to it it's uh, geology 101 really Mohs scale um, in terms of abrasive so, for instance, there's the calcined sand that I'd made. And now, 
what I want is a really fine grit and you would repeat this process a few times but firstly let's mix it up and so that all the really fine pieces of, of air floating in the water suspend it in there okay mix that up now let me do that again because the trick is you want a really fine grip so let's wash that out start again okay now I'm choosing a clear container because I want to have a show you how it happens okay so again mix it up heavier stuff just a little bit of time to settle pour the top part off and I'm just going to let that settle for a few minutes and what you'll see is that a, uh, get a light on that that the well the, the heavier grain is going to sink and you'll have a nice clear uh, water there on top and so it's in let's uh, now repeat that a few times to get smaller grit maybe run it through some cheesecloth so once the, it's really really small particles you can just again filter it again through some cloth the really small grains will be suspended in the water they'll they'll go through through the cloth and this is about making a small now yeah, already you should be able to let's get the light on that now that settle a little bit. I'll just put the light a little bit more clear. That's the fine stuff that you want to use for the polishing. Uh, I did it off camera prior to this, but that's I filtered it a couple times in this type of way. Uh, further, you know, after this little bit of experience, I'd filter it a little bit more. But compared to my earlier experiment to polish um, granite, where it was about 45 minutes to get it to this type of level, uh, this is uh, with the calcine sand finer, 15 minutes I think all up. So. I was using that small block, but to uh, increase the surface area, you know, use a larger, you know, bigger block to do the polishing. You can increase, you can scale it up, this scalability thing, <laughs> and then uh, multiply it by um, many workers. So it's just not a, uh, just not an issue. And it's again, uh, this thing of mooring and polish, you'll find copy pasted. Uh, the Wikipedia article and it really is lots of nonsense um, in there uh, doesn't take long to do the experiment you know look at um, older sources and modern tech even modern polishing they've just got nice big machines to do it and they've replaced uh, the labor but even doing it by hand it's not going to take uh, very long and now that I've calcined this sand and uh, we're going to increase the speed once more. There's no, you know, there's no greater teacher uh, than experience and experiment, experiment. Read all your sources, have a look around, and uh, especially don't take uh, Wikipedia and, and these blog posts on there because it's just not good. It's just not good. see the honed quite light uh, sorry the well not honed still quite rough there again you can you know, chalk test you can what the eye won't show you 
You'll see there's still a tool marks from the original condition of the stone. Some basic light honing. Now it's super smooth. Very, very low surface roughness. And let's get that out of the way. Getting darker, and that's the spot that I just worked with the calcined sand. Now, is it showing up on camera? Okay. About 15 minutes in, reflective surface. Only on this spot, only on the polished spot. It won't reflect over here. An earlier experiment, with a, and I'm thinking this calcined sand is a better one, and that it won't take very long to get the mirror finish. So in colour, and there we see the mirror reflective finish. I don't have generations of experience to draw upon it's just a little bit of dedication a little bit of experimentation and uh, a healthy dose of skepticism when it comes to uh, wikipedia articles that get repeated in videos and blogs etc so proof of concept and we'll go on further to do with that but yeah, more in finish, it's like with drilling and cutting and lost high technology. It's one of these things that uh, less time than what it takes to edit the videos and post them, etc. Uh, you could be answering these questions rather than just put mysterious question mark. Uh, yeah, if you're really truly interested in the topic you claim to be interested in, um, this is what you should be doing, not what I should be doing.